நண்பர்கள் அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் சமீபத்தில் நான் பேசின தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கில மொழிபெயர்ப்போட ஆங்கிலத்தில் பேசப்பட்டு தீபா அவர்களால் பேசப்பட்டு மிகப்பெரிய ஒரு நல்ல வரவேற்பை பெற்று வருகின்றன அப்படிங்கிறது எல்லோருக்குமே தெரியும் கிட்டத்தட்ட நாற்பதுக்கும் மேற்பட்ட வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் என்னுடைய தமிழ் வீடியோக்கள் ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்த்து போடப்பட்டு வருகின்றன மிகுந்த வரவேற்பு எல்லோருமே நல்லா வெல்கம் பண்ணுறீங்க தெரியுது இப்பொழுது ஏற்கனவே நான் பேசிய பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒவ்வொரு தனித்தனி கிரகங்கள் அதாவது பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் சூரியன் சந்திரன் செவ்வாய் ராகு உள்ளிட்ட ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் எந்த நிலையில் எப்படி இருந்தால் நல்ல பலன்களை தரும் என்பதை பேசிய ஒரு மிகுந்த வரவேற்பை பெற்ற பன்னிரெண்டு லக்ன வீடியோக்கள் இப்போது ஒவ்வொன்றாக ஆங்கிலத்தில் மொழிபெயர்க்கப்பட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து உங்களுக்கு வர இருக்கிறது இதில் இன்னொரு சிறப்பு என்னென்னா அவ்வப்போது உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் பேசிய சில விளக்கங்கள் சில சூற்றுமங்களை கூட தீபா அவர்கள் வந்து இந்த நடுவில் இந்த பனிரெண்டு லக்னங்களுக்கும் ஒன்பது கிரகங்கள் தனித்தனியே என்ன பலன்களை செய்யும் என்ற ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு நடுவே என்னுடைய உயர்நிலை வகுப்புகளில் நான் சொன்ன கருத்துக்களையும் இணைத்து தனித்தனி வீடியோவாக வெளியிட இருக்கிறார்கள் வழக்கம் போலவே இந்த ஆங்கில வீடியோக்களுக்கு உங்களுடைய வரவேற்பு இருக்கும் என்பதை நம்புகிறேன் வாழ்த்துக்கள் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் திஸ் ப்ரோக்ராம் இஸ் பிராட் டு யூ பை குருஜி டிவி திஸ் யூடியூப் வீடியோ இஸ் அ டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் ஆஃப் த டேமல் வீடியோ ஆஃப் அ ரெனவுண்ட் அஸ்ட்ராலஜர் ஜோதிஷ் மகாகுரு ஆதித்ய குருஜி த லிங்க் ஆஃப் த ஒரிஜினல் வேர்ஷன் தட் இஸ் த டேமல் வீடியோ is given in the description box of this video this is astrologer deepa and i'm presenting you the english version of the tamil video in my last video i explained the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of aries ascendant and in this video i'm going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of taurus ascendant The ascendant lord of Taurus is Venus and Venus is an enemy to moon. Both the luminous planets sun and moon are enemical planets to Venus. I will tell you a situation which can match the mindset of Venus and moon by an example. Imagine I'm in a very bad financial crisis. I badly need some money and you are my dead enemy. You are ready to give 10,000 rupees to me. However, since you are my enemy, I will not be ready to accept your offer. My personal feeling would be like, I prefer to die rather than borrowing some money from you. This is the relationship of Venus and Moon and the mindset of Venus. You have to definitely understand the relationship between Venus and Moon in this way. Moon is a planet which approaches all the planets with such motherly love because Moon is the significator of the mother. Those planets that consider Moon as their enemy will have a mindset as a sudden example. Imagine a situation where you and I are enemies for generations together. And let me say I'm imprisoned and 10,000 rupees will be enough to get a bail. Even if you are ready to offer 10,000 rupees, I will not be ready to accept it because I treat you as the worst enemy. This is exactly the mindset of Venus. When we understand astrology with these sorts of perceptions, we can make definitely better predictions. Venus treats Moon as its enemy because Moon is the lord of the third house, which is Marakasthana. For the native of Taurus ascendant, Moon will be the lord of Marakasthana and for the native of Libra ascendant, Sun is the lord of 11th house which becomes Padakadipati. For the native of Taurus ascendant, Moon gets exalted in Taurus, 
which is 11th house to its own house as per bhavat bhavam for the native of taurus ascendant when moon gets exalted in the ascendant house itself the native will have a very good mind though moon is an enemical planet to venus it is a luminous planet having said all these when moon gets exalted in the ascendant house itself it is good but we should also remember that moon is not the house lord of an inauspicious house for the native of taurus ascendant the third house is the maraka sthana in this situation the mind will be very strong and the younger brother will be of very good status the native will be blessed with multiple talents like writing music writing etc in the natal chart of the great music director ilaya raja as well you can see moon gets exalted in the ascendant house itself his native of taurus ascendant in the third house there are three planets venus jupiter and rahu in his natal chart moon and venus are in parivartan this is the reason for immense knowledge he possesses in music if you take a look at the natal charts of the great achievers you can definitely realize how much vedic astrology works 100% without fail since i have not got 100% confirmation about elia raja's natal chart i haven't published or discussed about his natal chart in my videos in the natal chart of mr elia raja the third house is extremely subhatwa in the natal chart of mr elia raja you will find the moon in the ascendant house itself and you can also find venus and jupiter in the third house venus and moon are in parivartan this makes the third house stronger you can see in the third house there is an exalted planet which is jupiter and in the ascendant house as well there is an exalted planet which is moon this planetary position gives all the benefits in writing music in composing etc though moon is an enemy the moon is enemical to venus the significance of the planets are beneficial the benefits will be delivered during its major planetary period this is a rule having said this though moon is lord of maraka sthana it gives a lot of benefits through its significance like writing music good mind fame etc you will become very famous based on the strength of the ascendant lord as well in your neighborhood or based on the strength you might be famous in a society or in a state or even much more or you might be famous in the street or you might be famous in your office or merely at your home based on the third house and the strength of the ascendant lord you might be famous within a society or within a state or even within a country or even more well for taurus ascendant when moon resides in the ascendant house it gets exalted when the third house lord gets exalted in the ascendant house and when the native is taurus ascendant and taurus rashi it is good based on the light energy of the moon you have to make predictions you can also check whether the moon is in parivartan which is an added benefit let me explain the effects of moon in the second house which is gemini when the third house lord moon is in second house it is not considered to be good because lord of maraka sthana should not be in the second house as per bhavat bhavam moon will be in the 12th house to its own house however moon will not deliver great benefits 
when it resides in the second house. And moreover, it resides in the house of Gemini, whose house lord treats moon as its enemy. The ascendant lord treats moon as enemy and the lord of the Gemini house where moon resides also treats moon as its enemy. It is not a great position when moon resides in the second house in Gemini for the native of Taurus ascendant. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the third house which is Cancer. When Lord of Marakasthana resides in its own house, it will increase the quality of Maraka. If the moon is Amavasya, then it affects more. For the native of Taurus ascendant, it is better when moon has got some light energy. When the Lord of Marakasthana is in the third house itself with Pabatva, it is not considered to be good. When moon resides in the third house in its own house, Cancer, it should not be Pabatva. What are the qualities of Pabatva? When moon is heading towards Amavasya or very close to Amavasya, it is considered to be Pabatva. Or even when it is Amavasya, it is considered to be Pabatva. Well, now let me explain the effects of moon in the fourth house which is Leo. It is a great benefit when moon resides in the fourth house. It attains Digbala in this house. And moreover, moon will be in the house whose house lord is a mutual friend. As per Bhavad Bhavam, moon will be in Leo, which is Marakasthana, to the Marakasthana of the ascendant. If the moon has a lot of light energy, it will make the Leo Subhatva. And when moon resides in Leo, it attains Digbala as well. So by all means, it will deliver its benefits. Let us imagine a situation where the moon is heading towards Amavasya. It is waning moon. In this case, a malafic that gains Digbala resides in the quadrant house. Based on this concept, still it will deliver benefits. Based on the light energy of the moon, you have to understand what moon will deliver. If the moon is waning, it is considered to be a malafic. If a malafic resides in the quadrant house, it is considered to be auspicious. In addition to this, when moon is digbala here, it is an added benefit. It will deliver benefits. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in house of Virgo, which is fifth house to the ascendant house. When moon resides in Virgo, it definitely needs to be Subhatva because it is a trine house. When moon is Subhatva and residing in Virgo, then it is considered to be auspicious. Moon will deliver a lot of benefits in this case. When Lord of Marakasthana is in the third house to its own house, then it is considered to be a yoga. When moon is Subhatva and resides in the trine house in Virgo, then it will increase natives' energy, majesty, courage and vigor. When moon resides in Libra, it will be in the sixth house to the ascendant house. Though it resides in sixth house, as per Bhavad Bhavam, it will be in the quadrant house to its own house, that is, fourth house to its own house Cancer, and moreover, it is in the house of Venus. So this position is sort of okay. Based on the concept that moon resides in another house of the ascendant Lord, and as per Bhavad Bhavam, it is in the quadrant house to its own house, it will not deliver very worse effects. When moon resides in Libra, it means that the native is Libra Rashi and Taurus Ascendant. The lord of both the houses is Venus. For both Ascendant and Rashi, Venus is the lord. This is a reason that moon will not deliver very worse effects when it resides in Libra. 
Now, let me explain the position of moon in the house of Scorpio, which is the seventh house to the ascendant house. There are different perceptions when moon resides in Scorpio. Marakatipadi, which is the lord of the third house, gets debilitated in Scorpio. This is considered to be good. When Marakatipadi loses its Thanabala, it is good. However, there is a shortcoming. The Lord of Maraka resides in another Maraka house. To overcome this shortcoming, Moon should definitely get Subhatva. The Taurus Ascendant needs to be handled carefully in regard to the predictions. You have to be very careful while making predictions for Aquarius and Taurus Ascendant. At least for the native of Libra Ascendant, uh, Moon is the Lord of the 10th house. The very same applies for the native of Gemini Ascendant. Well, first of all, let us understand what is Maraka. Maraka is death or something that is equal to death. Moon will not give Maraka that is death to the native of Gemini Ascendant because Moon treats the ascendant Lord Mercury as its son, as its child. For the native of Taurus ascendant, when moon resides in Marakasthana, it will be in a mindset like, uh, you are my enemy, why should I show mercy to you? Because Venus is an enemy to the moon. For the native of Gemini ascendant as well, moon is Marakadibadi, which is Lord of second house. Yet, Moon treats Ascendant Lord Mercury as its child. It has a very motherly tendency towards Mercury. A mother will not definitely kill her child, right? And this is the reason a saying is there that Moon never kills. Yet, for the native of Taurus Ascendant, where Taurus is Therarashi, Moon being the Lord of the third house, which is Maraka, should not reside in another Maraka house. In addition, this moon gets debilitated in the house of Scorpio. I often reiterate a point that debilitation is considered to be the least Pabatua. Debilitation is nothing but losing one's strength, Sthanabala. When a planet gets debilitated, it has the least Pabatua, whatever planet it is. When can this debilitation be compensated? It's nothing but Subhatva. And of course, needless to say, the light energy of the moon is also important here. You have to check whether the moon is a waxing moon heading towards Purnima or full moon. And also check whether this debilitated moon has got the connection of natural benefits such as Jupiter or Venus. To sum up, when moon gets debilitated in the seventh house, it is not good. However, when it gains Subhatva, then it will not deliver Maraka or events that are equal to Maraka. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the eighth house, which is Sagittarius. A luminous planet should not reside in the eighth house to the ascendant. Though this is the house of Jupiter, as per Bhavad Bhavam, Moon will be in the sixth house to its own house Cancer. In certain situations, if Moon is Pabatva, then it will deliver more Maraka. So definitely Moon should not be in the eighth house to the Ascendant. In general, Moon should not be in the eighth house to the Ascendant. There are certain exceptions where moon can reside in 6th house and 8th house and where moon should not reside in the 6th house and 8th house. If you analyze the ascendant, you can figure out all these. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 9th house which is Capricorn. When moon resides in Capricorn, it will aspect its own house. The house of Saturn is not a friendly house to the moon. The moon does not treat anybody as its enemy. However, Saturn is not a friendly planet to the moon. 
When moon resides in the ninth house, it is in a trine house. If moon stays here, Subhatva, then it will deliver a lot of benefits to the native of Taurus ascendant. Moon will deliver more benefits like fame, writing skills, music, which are all the house effects of the third house. Since moon aspects its own house cancer from Capricorn, so, moon strengthens its own house by its aspect, which is third house to the ascendant. Now, let me explain the effects of moon in the house of Aquarius, which is the tenth house to the ascendant house. When moon resides in Aquarius, it loses its directional strength, that is Digbala. However, this is the quadrant house to the ascendant. I often use to reiterate that a lot of the third house can be in the 10th house because third house, 6th house, 10th house and 11th house are called as Upajayasthana. As per the strength of Subhatva, moon will deliver benefits when it resides in the 10th house. Now let me explain the effects of moon in the 11th house which is Pisces. This position is considered to be very auspicious. This is the best position of moon for the native of Taurus ascendant. If a native is born as Taurus ascendant and Pisces Rashi, the native is considered to be such a fortunate person. If the moon has got more Subhatva, then it will deliver immense benefits. The major planetary period of moon will deliver the best benefits to the native of Taurus Ascendant. If one is born as Revati Nakshatra, then the native will enjoy the Dasha of Moon at the very right age and it will deliver great benefits to the native. As per Subhatva of Moon, it will deliver its benefits. Now, let me explain the effects of Moon in the 12th house which is Aries. A luminous planet should not be in the 12th house to the ascendant. It is not considered to be good. As per Bhavad Bhavam, though moon resides in the 10th house to its own house, it is not considered to be good. The only antidote for this position is Subhatva. Otherwise, moon will not deliver benefits. It is not good. In my next video, I am going to explain the effects of moon in 12 different houses for the native of Gemini Ascendant. Well, this is question time. What is the astrological reason behind the fame of the great music director, Mr. Ilayaraja? Please write your answers in the comment section of this video. In the description box, we have added the playlist link of all English videos so far published. The link of Aditya Guruji's website is given below in the description box of this video that is accessible by both iOS and Android users. The link of Google Play Store app is also given in the description box that is available for only Android users. The Tamil version of this video is also available. Please check the description box. Write your feedback to astro.writetous at gmail.com. Thank you.